Hey, it's Brandog, and I might not be sure on what's happening at DC as of late. We just got hit with this news. Henry Cavill is no longer Superman. Looks like James Gunn's not only taking a flamethrower to the DCU that came before him, he's also salting the earth as well. I wouldn't be surprised if he's thrown it all away, including the stuff he worked on. Wait, wait, wait! The f Why'd you show me that? No. That's alright. But what I do know is that I have been waiting for a Blue Beetle movie for years. Blue Beetle is one of DC's most underrated characters. He hasn't really made that many appearances in popular media besides that one Batman show and Injustice 2. By the way, he's my main for that game. A lot of people write him off as DC's answer to Spider-Man, which isn't really fair to be honest. I personally adore this character and I've recently started reading more of his comic runs. And I've loved every second of it. I want to explain to y'all why I'm so damn excited for this movie. And maybe I'll get you a little excited too. Also, I just want an excuse to talk about comics because I never get to do that. <laughs> so strap in folks and let's talk about Blue Beetle for way longer than I probably should. The character was a major hit back when he was established, but now not enough people talk about him. All three adaptations of the character are wholly unique from each other, and their differences allow for a lot of variety in their stories. The original concept was basically just a Green Hornet knockoff. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. No, 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 no. That ain't, that ain't fucking right. There we go. <laughs> but after some necessary changes, he became Dan Garrett, aka the Blue Beetle. A guy who drinks a strange serum that gives him super strength, so now he can fight crime. Yeah, Dan Garrett is pretty generic by today's standards. I mean, look at his costume. But that's to be expected given the time this character was created. Oh, Jesus Christ. This character existed for almost a hundred years now, and we're just now getting a movie about him? Yeah, these stories are old, but who cares, they're a lot of fun. And people went fucking nuts for him back then. Dan Garrett continued strong for a while before the lead editor at Charlton said, Hey, you guys know that Batman guy, right? He's pretty cool, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I, guess, I, I guess I know Batman. Let's copy him. Let's just do Batman. And that's basically what happened. Dan Garrett is killed in some kind of island explosion and Ted Korg steps up to take his place. The key difference is Ted has literally no powers at all. He just uses various gadgets to help him fight crime. This version didn't last long, however. He ended up being cancelled and the character would take a long ass hiatus before eventually returning. Blue Beetle is now a Latino teenager named Amy Reyes. Now the character is granted insane powers by an alien parasite called a Scrab that is literally attached to his spine. He then gets to do really cool shit like shoot blue lasers, fly around really fast, and other various things I'll talk about later. This version has stuck around for a while and it doesn't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon which is great because this is easily my favorite version of the three Blue Beetles. What can I say, y'all? I'm a stupid fucking biased fan. I think this character will translate to film extremely well for several different reasons. I'm about to tell you about it, if you just be patient with me, Jesus fucking Christ. Blue Beetle is unironically one of the coolest and arguably strongest characters of the DC Universe. His suit has multiple abilities such as flight, super strength, and a variety of weapons. And it does a great job at protecting Amy from any real danger. My favorite being the huge mecha one where he just massacres his opponents. He chopped this one dude's arm off completely, and he's been shown to hold his own against multiple superpowered beings at once. That's primarily due to the suit's insane abilities and Amy's sheer determination and temper. The cinematic potential of this character is endless, it would feel like Iron Man meets Green Lantern, it would be awesome. If the action is done well in this film, it will be endlessly entertaining. Blue Beetle gets into some pretty cool fights in the comics, and I'd like to see that adapted well to the screen. I hope they don't nerf the character just to make him more relatable and funny just like they did with Spider-Man in the beginning of his MCU trilogy. Just make the teenage aspect the relatable part. A broke nerdy teen by day, and an overconfident superhero by night. Basically what I'm saying is I hope he's not a bumbling idiot for his own films, but for some reason is a badass in his crossover once. <coughs> <coughs> Speaking of which, his character hasn't shied away from the team-ups. He's been on the Teen Titans, the Justice League, the Young Justice team, and was even Batman's part-time sidekick. These two have been teaming up even before Haney's days as the character. He's never overshadowed in his team-ups, which is great. One time he was mistaken as an alien savior whilst Batman was mistaken as his sidekick. It is kind of funny to see a mecha alien dude take orders from a guy dressed as a bat. It would be nice to see their relationship at some point, but it looks like The Flash is Bruce's part-time partner for right now. Also known as a pee-pee. Pack it up, every other comedian. I won. Which is whatever, I don't want this character to be overshadowed in his own stories anyway. But if he's not in a potential Teen Titans or Young Justice movie, I'll probably die inside. 
DC's been pumping out pretty great superhero movies lately, and I don't mean they're perfect, but I mean they're each unique and leave a lasting impression on you when you watch them. Suicide Squad was a super heartfelt film, comic book come to life type thing, and Black Adam was fucking insane in the best way possible. But the reason I'm excited for this movie is we'll get to see more of what it's like to be a normal human in the DC universe. I didn't love Shazam, but I liked the way it portrayed the family for the most part. Except for the god-awful dialogue. This time we'll get to see the perspective of a small but lovable Mexican-American family who lives in Texas. And what it's like growing up with an alien parasite in your spine. That's so fucking gross, but it's so fucking cool. And also the team behind this film seems really passionate about it. I am humbled and excited to be able to bring Blue Beetle to life. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be funny, it's gonna be crazy, but it also has feelings. It's, it's all of those things, like Latin American people are all of those things, <laughs> and the movie reflects that. This contains uh, uh, all of what's great about Blue Beetle, in my opinion, uh, in a way that's very exciting, and that's only gonna give better and better as these guys take it away. Hiring a guy who's primarily known for creating narratives around people struggling to live life the way they want and struggling to survive moment to moment to make a superhero movie about a broke kid from Texas has so much damn potential. Imagine the stories one could tell. I have high faith in this director even though I'm not familiar with most of his work, but just from the passion he speaks alone I get a strong feeling that I'll get the Blue Beetle movie I've always longed for. In fact everyone's passion draws me in. The actor playing Blue Beetle is from Cobra Kai, and I haven't seen that show but I've heard he's really good in it. And you can tell by the way he speaks that he's a massive fan of the character. My gnome is Blue Beetle, I'm excited to be here for this panel and uh, we'll, we'll just hop right into it. With each, you know, superhero movie, it just, it, you have to one-up each other. So I know for a fact that any of the other superheroes out there who think they have the best superhero suit, I'm calling you out for a rap battle. He was definitely right about this suit. That shit looks incredible. I really hope they don't paint over it like they do with lots of other superhero projects. Also, this actor looks exactly like the character and even sounds like how I imagined he would. I can't wait for this fucking movie, y'all. The stories you could tell, as I said before. Haney Ray's in his world is so damn compelling. The situations and moments you can put him in. Having to hide your super suit from your super close family or having your mom find out the hard way that you've been hiding a secret like this from her for so long. Seeing the perspective of a poor kid who lives in a world filled with gods and aliens is exactly what DC needs right now. So many of these films have been world-ending stakes and are constantly setting up future plot lines. It would be so refreshing to see a story separated from all of that. A movie that has a contained and simple narrative about a kid trying to be a hero while also caring for his family. Hamie's world is filled with amazing characters from the supporting cast to the bizarre villains. This character's been the space and on countless crazy adventures, but I hope this movie is a smaller stakes one that's just about a boy. A boy trying his best to be a hero. He looks up to the heroes before him and aspires to be even better. He proves the broke kids and most importantly to Latino kids who get to see a hero who's similar to them and shows them that they can do whatever they want if they just try. It shows them they can live up to their idols and make a difference. This is one of the most human characters in DC Comics and I hope they show that. I highly recommend reading this character. His stories are endlessly entertaining and filled with so much heart. I love Blue Beetle and I have so much hope for this movie. Also DC, I would punch a million orphans to see a Blue Beetle animated series, so just thought I'd throw that one out there. Blue Beetle at your service.